let's get let's get in the mailbag. Uh, we got Nick here, so he'll be replacing Conan in the mailbag, which means he has to answer uh, as Conan. If, oh, yeah. uh, we're right, here, here comes like, hey, hey, what, what's it like working with Mill Mascaris? Like next, yeah, right. right. <laughs> yeah. uh, I so tried to first avoid those. From, from Jared Aviat, <clears throat> the subject is the greatest managers in wrestling. Hi, K100 fam. Hope everyone's doing well. This is the one true wrestling historian from down under. This guy classifies himself as a wrestling historian, by the way. Okay. Uh, there's a lot uh, is of, that on his Twitter a lot profile. Of expanding around these days. Yes. Just wanted to ask you about who you guys would rank as some of the best managers of all time or your favorite managers of all time in pro wrestling. For me, of course, I have to mention incredible performers such as Paul Heyman, Jim Cornette, and Bobby Keenan being that, uh, that elite list of some of the greatest managers ever in wrestling. But I would also add the Grand Wizard, Ernie Roth, Paul Bearer, and the amazing Playboy Gary Hart to my list as well. All were tremendous managers. Who would the crew say their favorite managers of all time are? Why do you think? Why do you all think that being a great effective manager is seemingly a lost art nowadays? Seems that they're all just average-looking middle-aged men nowadays. It seems that there's only one formula. Thank you very much. Kind regards, Jared. Um, I'll, I'll answer this first. I think the two best managers of all time are Jim Cornette and Bobby Heenan. Okay? There have been other good ones, okay? but I think they're the best because nobody... I mean, if we're, if we're doing... These have, this is how good Jim Cornette and Bobby Heenan are, right? Is that if we're... If, if the Mount Rushmore of professional wrestling... Like if we look at as like you know professional wrestlers, you know The Rock, Austin, Hogan, Flair would be our pretty much. Uh, most people would agree that would be the Mount Rushmore, right? But if if we like branched it out into performers, like who are the best wrestling performers? Guys like Heyman, Cornette, and Heenan and stuff, they'd have to be in the conversation to be on the Mount Rushmore. I'd go a step further than that and say I've always maintained that I think Bobby Heenan is the greatest all round performer in the history of the business. Mm. Uh, Heenan, when you, if you, if you can, if you can find, there's not, there's not a whole lot of it available, but if you can find footage of him working. Like, yeah. Bumping is unbelievable. It's a great bump. He was cre- creative. He, he invented a lot of bumps. Yes. Oh, yeah. I believe. Yeah. The manager. He's second to none. Again, pretty much pioneered the genre uh, in the, in the modern era. And then as a commentator, he was untouchable as well. Uh, and not to mention the fact that if you look at um, prime time with, <laughs> With him and Monsoon, I mean, that was almost a step. That wasn't. That was somewhere in between being a commentator or a manager. You know that right. because they weren't really commentating on a wrestling show. They were just hosting and vamping and just kind of ad libbing. You'll never see that again in the. It was certainly not in the WWE because that that that, that the environment doesn't allow for it. But I mean, you can you name any other performer who had so few flubs who just always no matter no matter who was think about it no matter who was in the segment with him whether it was flair hogan andre you know like you're talking about the greatest of all time heenan was always like the focal point like when he when he was talking it was like oh here we go bobby heenan is 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 the most flawless and incredible all-round performer that the business has ever seen and probably will ever see had you uh i i don't i doubt you had worked with him nick because of his health and stuff but had you met him or had you ever worked with him on a show uh, no i mean met, met him very very briefly you know a, a car a comic carnival convention one of those you know um <laughs> but yeah obviously much uh, uh much much a long time after his um you know his health had declined quite yeah. substantially but yeah, yeah dude, i mean he is for me like you can watch any segment that involves Bobby Heenan at any time, and it still holds up. Uh, he was. Uh, when I think about if you're a, if you're a promoter or an owner or something, you think about like anything you're trying to get over, any segment, any new idea, any concept, any new show, or whatever. If Bobby Heenan's available, you're going to put him in it some way, shape, or form. You're going to go, okay, let's stick Heenan in there. And, uh, and, and I'll, I'll say this too about. Work. I'll say this too about him. the guy was a r- r- was a never was a baby face top heel his entire career because he ha- he he perfected the art of just being very unlikable when he would speak he was always angry <laughs> he's always pissed he was never had a nice was never nice he's just like you know it was just like it was a great he was a perfect heel yeah you know, but I'll say this I think that this part of his career gets overlooked sometimes because he has said himself he wasn't particularly a big fan of it but like even when he was a commentator in wcw and he was kind of more of a straight guy he was more of a he was more of like an analyst and he was he was i mean not a baby face but he was just more like a sort of he was playing it more like a 
sports announcer. Like he was just kind of lending his credibility to stuff. He added so much to mm -hmm. some huge moments, like, and really, like, I mean, just gave so much credibility to so many guys, helped get so many guys over because he just, he had the art of knowing when to speak, never over, never overstepped his time, never went too long, never took anyone's like legs out from them. I mean, he was just, he, he was a master. I mean, I know we're talking about managers here, but I would, I mean, for me, it's like, yeah, there were guys before him, but when you think about everyone he managed, him and Botwinkle was just, ah, uh, chef's kiss, you know, like, and people don't even really talk about that now because it was AWA. So it doesn't sort of fit into the sort of, you know, revisionist narrative, but like him and Botwinkle alone would have been enough to put him in the hall of fame. You know, not to mention all his run in the WWF and, you know, everything he did after that. Like, he, he's untouchable. But, uh, yeah. Well, plus, he had the, great, the greatest turn in the history. He was, he was instrumental in being the guy that got the, the greatest turn in wrestling history when he, we, he pulled Andre from the good guy side to the bad guy side. And that was like, right. everyone was shocked, you know. And, <laughs> like that's a, about, yeah. and that's, a great, that's a great example because what was, what was Andre's heel turn? He just walked out with him. Yeah. <laughs> it what he did it wasn't like oh you know he's coming to help and then it turned and then at the last minute turns around and decks Hogan or something no he just walked out with Bobby Heenan and the second that people saw Andre standing with Bobby Heenan everybody went what like, <laughs> right, he, that wasn't that wasn't Andre you know I, yeah. I, I, well, what is Andre doing, doing you know <laughs> right that's yeah. when I became a fan right yeah. that's that 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 shows you how synonymous that's how, you know how synonymous his character was with evil. You know, it, at that point in time, with that audience, they went anyone who's immediately. And if you're standing with Bobby Heenan, you're immediately hated. So, yeah, yeah the best. So